Hey y'all, this is Diane and I'm really excited. I'm Diane Gibbs, host of Design Recharge and I'm interviewing myself today. So I'm really excited to be able to show you some things that I've been working on that'll hopefully help you as well. And so anyway, good to have you all and I'm just happy that you're all here. Okay, awesome. Hey, all right, so we're gonna get started. I'm gonna just take you through a little bit of my background because that's normally what I do. So you're not gonna watch me anymore. You're gonna see my slideshow. So, so anyway, this is finding your superpower and telling your story. I wanted to tell you about this, why I've done this and um, what it is actually. So if you were at Creative South, you got a, a little sticker and maybe a sketchbook hopefully and and you were able, you probably didn't know what this was, but this guy, his name is Huckabee. And I'm real excited to share him with you. I'm not, I do not, have not ever considered myself a um, uh, illustrator, but I'm working on it. So I'm, this is a side project for me is working on my illustration. So we're going to get going. So I started off, um, I was a kid who liked art, but I wasn't super into it. I um, I didn't like, I did sports and I danced and I did all kinds of things. So I um, <laughs> appreciate it, Zach. Um, it happened a little crisis here, but that's okay. Stuff like that happens. All right. So um, I would start businesses. I was very entrepreneurial as a kid even. And so for me, having my own business wasn't uh, anything different. Like I would just didn't, I guess I assumed that I would be a entrepreneur, but nobody in my um, family was necessarily an entrepreneur. So I didn't really have, I really think that people who come from that background and have, um, have parents that have their own business, they have a little real, I think they have a leg up. So my dad worked, my mom was a stay at home mom, which of course she never got a vacation because she had us all the time. So that um, is kind of, I remember my first, um, my first real graphic designy kind of thing that I made a business out of was I was trying to sell bookmarks to my, um, to my family and I have a big family. So I, it was called the bookmark maker and I had a catalog and everything. It was great, but we would do fun stuff like that. We didn't watch a ton of TV. We weren't like taken away from TV or something, but we just played a lot and we would do art to me and my sister would do art to play and she's older than me. So I was just the crazy little sister that always wanted to hang out with her and she was four years older and she didn't always want to hang out with me. So I think the PDF's working, so I'm going to try and see if I can share my screen again. Please, Lord Jesus, let this work. Okay, let's see if the down arrow works. This is the webinar. Yay! Okay, who am I? Sorry about that. So here's a little brief. I didn't include the thing from sixth grade. Um, of course, some of you in 1996 probably weren't born, but that's okay. Um, and I don't even know. I'm really bad with math. I can't tell you what grade I, or what year it was. And when I was in sixth grade, the bookmark maker age or whatever. Anyway, in 1996, I graduated from Auburn University, which is in Alabama, um, with a BFA in graphic design. And I grew up in Atlanta, which is in Georgia, if anybody doesn't know that. Um, in 2000, I worked, I went straight from um, undergrad or went from Auburn. I moved to Denver and I was working, this is really like 1996 to 2000, I worked as a designer in Denver. And I worked for a small firm. I worked for um, a startup, which I'm really thankful. I think that really impacted me a lot. And then I also worked at a corporation. And all those things really impacted me as a designer. And in 2002, I, or 2000, um, fall of 2000, I went to Virginia Commonwealth University. I was blessed enough to get into that school. It's a really good school for design. And I graduated in 2002. So then I started teaching adjunct in 2002 to 2003 and uh, to the summer, May or whatever of 2003. And I was a bartender and I was a waitress and I'm super thankful for that as well. Um, and I got to, um, I got a, I worked adjunct and then I got a position at the University of South Alabama, which I, is where I am now. And I was teaching graphic design. We really built the program. I'm really thankful. I really think teaching helps me as a designer, but I also, if you ever, um, 
if I ever introduce myself to you, more than likely I will say I'm a designer and I know I misspelled position. Oh man, bookers, I knew that was going to happen. Anyway, post I I O N. That's great. Um, the, so, and I wish I could see what the chat is, but you know, the stupid uh, other computer isn't working for me. So lovely. Um, anyway, whatever. So I started design, uh, I, I always introduce myself as a designer, not necessarily a professor. Um, I think of myself as a designer first. You know, your professors in school didn't more than likely had no training as a teacher. And I didn't. I had one semester, one course as a, uh, not a whole semester of, you know, bunch of classes. It was just one class, one semester. And I, you didn't have to take the class, but I wanted to try to be the best I could be. So I took that class. And when I moved here, there really wasn't a huge um, design community. So I really, I was working a lot. I still work a lot. Um, I probably work seven days a week, but I really like what I do. So I'm good with it. Um, and I started Design Recharge kind of as a result of the lack of design community. So I lo um, I started that in 2012. I think this today or last week was like three years doing Design Recharge, which I'm super excited about and I'm very thankful for. And then um, today is when I'm really officially launching my course for designers. And it, I always tell people, oh, I'm launching a course. And people who know me as a professor are like, oh, they don't think anything of it. They think, oh, it's just a course you're doing. But it's really a course for you. It's a course for designers. It's a course for freelancers, per people who have already graduated. My students get to go through it for free. All right. So anyway, so two years ago, this is kind of where this all kind of started. I was doing design recharge, and I was teaching a group of students that were juniors at the time. And I had not taught many of them at all, um, just a handful. And there were probably 22 students, and I'd probably had four or five of them. I had some of them as advisees, but you don't really get to know them. So they, I, I found out that they really needed confidence. And I watched, um, I had watched Amy Cuddy's TED Talk. And if you go, the replay on my site has this video, so you can go there and just watch. If you go to the homepage, rechargingyou.com, you'll be able to see um, the video as well if you want. It's in the blog if you're watching this not on June 10th, 2015. Anyway, so that TED Talk is really um, important. It's I think it's a really good confidence builder, and it really talks about the power of what you can do if you just fake it till you become it is her big thing. And so it's about power stances. So I did ask for permission to use these of my students. And they went out there and they did this power pose. And I was so excited they posted it. And um, so I asked Courtney. I didn't um, OK it with Verdui or Austin or Daiko. But hopefully they're OK with me sharing this today. I did ask Courtney. So and Courtney said yes. So anyway, that's how the, that's their names. If you guys want to look them up, they're awesome designers. So they did that power stance. But what I realized that they that group of students, about 22 of them, really needed something else. They needed something else to boost their confidence and to and they needed I needed to get to know them better. So I tasked my publication design class. It was all juniors with creating a presentation where they would teach something that they were an expert at to the class. And the reactions were kind of mixed. Um, some knew what they were going to teach, and some were stumped, and some were almost in tears and saying that they weren't an expert at anything. And so then I asked them if they could tie their shoes. So I said, you just need to find the right audience, because you are an expert at tying your shoes, more than likely. And then you need to find that audience. You need to speak to them enthusiastically, visually, verbally. And you want to speak to them in a way that they were going to relate to you, and it's going to reach them. So that's kind of where I'm saying to you, you may be in that same position, like I'm not an expert in anything, or maybe you think, yeah, you know, I'm really good at, like Brittany's really good hand letterer, oh, she's, she's a really good um, illustrator. So, you know, those are part of their superpowers, I think. Okay, so for those of people that were kind of struggling, um, I met one-on-one -on -one and I sat down with them and we, sometimes it was a 15 minute conversation and sometimes it was like an hour conversation. And we talked about their life and what their strengths were and times that they struggled and eventually triumphed. You know, really anything that's going to set them apart. And 
what I wanted to do and what I want you to know that just because you're trying to get design work doesn't mean that you can't bring in something from that's personal, something from your past and from from your life. It doesn't even have to relate to design, but it's just maybe something that you love and now you are going to visually and verbally communicate it to someone else. So why does it stop going if I'm not going fast enough? Anyway, sorry about that. So because I believe we all have something to offer, we all have a superpower, we just may not know what that is or how to use it to help other people. So three things that really resulted from these presentations was that they learned about each other. I learned about them, of course. They felt closer as a group, which I think is awesome. And then they presented with confidence. And actually, I believe that you will do this with your potential clients. I'm going to tell you in a little bit how to find them and how to really identify who those people are. But, you know, I think you are going to learn about them and they're going to learn about you. You are going to feel closer because you're going to be building relationships. And then you're also going to be more confident in your work and also professionally as a designer. And I'm just going to escape real quick and just see if I can. Um, um, oh, good, Courtney. I'm glad that I just wanted to read the chat real, real good. Um, so Jason Card's an expert at um, eating pizza. Um, oh, the square serif, Kim, because I'm just having to go back and forth. That's Botan, B-O-T-O-N, and, oh, good, Vardui, I'm glad you're okay with it. And I wish I had the other screw, I know, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, typo. Okay, all right, so maybe I could just do it like this. Is this terrible if I do it like this, and you could see this, and then I could still see the chat? Tell me, yes, this is terrible. It would be super helpful if I could see it like that. Oh, boogers not. There we go again. Um, <laughs> yes, you can wear a cape. You know, some people say, and I'm going to get back to the PDF. Some people say that when you're like at a conference, that one way is for you to always kind of to have that mark that you're that you are using. Now, I I'm not sure if meeting with a client. I actually don't think you should meet wear all black. That's something I tell my students. But, um, all right, good, thank you. But I really think that um, as a professional, it's important, I'm not sure if I'm, well, I guess I can click it here. Hopefully it'll work like this. Um, and I'm sure I misspelled something else. So I'm so sorry, because I didn't really get to spell check. Um, all right, <laughs> oh, Hannah says it's horrible, oh no. Um, Anyway, I'm going to keep going because I lose my train of thought and I don't know what I was doing. Oh, Austin's here. I mean, I don't know if he's here, but I'm featuring him. So they presented these uh, topics, these presentations. And they, because it was a publication design class, I had to kind of make something printed out publication because we weren't doing online publications at the time. Um, so he did something. His He didn't ever come to me. He knew what his um, expert skill was. And he presented that he was a, um, he could do HD photography and he really took us through. They also had to have a, um, like a pamphlet or a handout or something worksheet for us. So it was given in the print. So here was Austin's, here was Courtney, who's actually in the chat. So this was an awesome piece by Courtney. She knows how to paint with ink. You should check her out. Uh, Courtney, you should probably write your Instagram handle in the, I think it's court underscore Renee, R-E-N-E but I'm not sure, can't remember everything but off the top of my head. But this was Courtney's and she had a beautiful handout. Oh, and that was a that was a blank slide. <laughs> and then this was Daiko, Daiko Hachia, Hachia, I think is how um, we were told to say it maybe. He, how to illustrate cute doodles, he's awesome. Um, Lenny, you missed a ton, now I'm finally being able to see the chat, it's no big deal. So this over to the left was his presentation cover and then this was his um, his handout for us. It was great. Oh, there's Courtney's, Court Renee, there you go. Follow her, she's, she's this person. Okay, back to my blank slide. Okay, now Daiko, and I don't know what Daiko's is, but maybe Courtney can ask him because he they work together. And then Gabby Aragon, she did um, about, you know, being different, kind of like being alone and kind of going on her own path. And it was about being able to read people. And I thought that was awesome. You know, it was really different. It wasn't, it definitely uses soft skills. So 
I really like that and that was one of the reasons that I focused on this because your superpower may not be an illustration ability or you know I'm wicked with letting or something like it may be that you can read clients really well or you can talk to people or you listen and I thought that was really good oh good I'm glad Courtney he's watching over his shoulder and so Huda um, Hassan she um, is wears a hijab and so she taught us all about like how she stylizes everything she does great photography with this and how she coordinates the different hijabs with um her clothes and everything she's super um uh, trendy and great i don't know what you call that because i'm definitely not um a fashion person but that's okay um, so this is what she did and then uh, Vardui did how to drive a stick shift which I thought was great you know again something outside of the outside of the design world um, Cody Louvier he talked about how to paint um, and what what to paint a house and I mean it was great like what tools to use it was fantastic and this is an interior shot from from his presentation and then Sheldon um, he is from Great Britain and he had this whole thing about um, you know the words and what they say over there isn't necessarily what we say in America and um, so he went through the same thing you know different names same thing and he kind of had this like uh, stick figure kind of thing and I always think this is hilarious and he probably is not going to be excited that I'm sharing this but he one of the um, presentation slides was embarrassing moments for Sheldon so he had moved here when he was in high school and he was in art class and he asked the teacher for a rubber and if you notice there's like a, oh no that's my hand oh that was a perfect placement there um, but the art teacher was like son we can't give you those you know he but he was asking for an eraser but he didn't know it was called a rubber or anyway you know what I mean so I want you to know um, what oh thank you Courtney shared um, Dico Dico's um, handle so what's your superpower and what is a superpower anyway so I think it's an expert skill it's a strength it's something that sets you apart I think it's something that you can offer clients or employers that's unique. Maybe it's not unique in, to the world, but it's unique to their company. It's a skill that you possess that will help their business expand and grow. And I'm actually going to use Courtney as an example here. The company that she worked for didn't really have a lot of illustrators, and she's a painting. Um, she got her undergrad, first undergrad from Auburn as a painting major. And then she came back and came through as design. And I love students like that because they have such a a uh, great skill and so really she was able to offer them something that nobody else can offer them and I think people have a misconception of when they're looking for a job and again this is not necessarily looking for a job but think about it like a company looking for a uh, designer to a freelancer or somebody to do their next ad campaign what what are you going to be able to do that's going to be different? That's something that you can offer them that's not just fitting in with what everybody else does. And I think that's that superpower. And a lot of times we don't see, we don't know what that superpower is. Um, we discount that superpower thinking that these characteristics and skills are common to everybody. Derek Sievers talks about this in his book, Anything You Want. I did share a link on the blog post page so you can check that out great book won't take you that long my I had a student who gave it to me and she said I'll take you an hour and I'm a really slow reader and it took me like four days but that's okay um, but what happens is you are I think when you are able to hone in on what these superpowers are you're able to offer more so Derek Sievers talks that he was like, yeah, everybody can do that, but really everybody can't. Maybe it's the way you did it. Maybe you had to learn how to do it. And you think, well, I learned, you know, I learned it on YouTube and now here's my take on it or, or whatever. But really you have a specific thing, the way you do, the way you do. It could be part of your process, could be anything. So anyway, just to kind of get, so I think three skills or strengths that you possess, I want you to really look at your soft skills. So things like listening or reading people, um, design skills that you possess. Um, obviously, you know what that is, uh, kerning crazy. I don't know. Maybe you're great at that. Um, and then things that are outside of the field, like you really are a sports fanatic and you know how to like read charts and I don't know what you do, whatever. 
Oh, come on, keep going, please keep going. There, there we go. So now here's your first like assignment. Now, granted, you can always watch this later. So if you're like, oh crap, I didn't know we were taking notes today, but you were taking notes today. So I want you to think of a list of action words or verbs, right? that you want clients to use when they're describing you. Now, these could be invisible clients, right? Right? They're not real right yet, but we are pretending like they are because I think it's always good to, if you don't have an idea of what you want and who you want it to be then, or who you want to be, then you're never going to reach it and you definitely aren't going to know when you get there. So define who you are. You first have to define who you are as a, as a freelancer, as a business. And then what are your core values? And, and core values are really your beliefs um, and things that you would not compromise on, things that your company stands for, um, you know, things that you believe in. And we're going to talk about some things that are really important to you in just a minute. And I hate when people do that. Like, just get on with the ladies, just talk about it. So why do I need to define the core values of my business? And I just side note here, I've never been so nervous. Like, I do this every week, except I'm just asking the questions. Now I finally know what the other people think. And I clearly talk to students, but I guess they don't know. They know. They don't know when I'm wrong. And so I can, you know, mush over it. Anyway, here we go. So um, why do I need to define the core values of my business? Well, you can use these values and these beliefs to act like as a filter between you and potential clients. You can find clients that value the same things by looking at their mission statements or looking how they post. Um, it's a great way to start the conversation. It's a great way because you have now shared common interests and you know that you believe um, you believe what they believe. So who is my I ideal audience and how can I find them? And, and who needs my skills? What skill do I have that somebody else? Thank you, Jeremy. Um, oh, I, I know. I get it. You got this. I get it. I get it now. I was like, I don't know. You got what? Um, okay. I got it. I'm just... My mom's probably watching like, oh, honey, um, here we go. So who needs my skills? So really, it's about finding the right client, not just finding any client. Thank you, Kim. Um, it's really about finding the right one, the right one for you. So to find your ideal client. So I want you to think of here's the next action step for you. Think of specific traits that you are looking for in a client. And it can help you narrow your results. Like, I just want to make money. Like, that's probably not a great way to help you filter out some of the clients that are great. So, oh, there's a lag. Okay. I'm sorry. So here's some traits that I said, I thought that having reasonable expectations of me and their marketing and ad campaigns is really important to me. That's important. Like, I don't want them to be like, Oh, I'm going to make a million dollars after this ad campaign you created for me. Like that's not realistic. Um, I think it's important that they understand um, what they are not an expert in and it allows me to help them by doing what's best for their company. Thanks, Jason. I'm okay. <gasps> he says for me to take a deep breath. I know I talk really fast anyway. This is how I talk in class. My students are like, yeah, we know we can just they've learned to take notes quickly. But what I'm trying to say by this trait is I, I don't want somebody who's trying to teach me how to do their business or how to do my business, right? I want them to teach me about their business, but I don't want them to be like, oh, move this to the left, put an image behind there or whatever. Like, hey, that's a bad choice. I know what I know and I've studied this stuff. So um, another trait, are they easy to get in touch with? And they communicate, well, com <laughs> that's funny. I messed up on the word communicate clearly and that could be an email that could be verbally they really say what they want you know things like that uh, i really like clients that my goal really is to have clients that have allow me to have creative freedom and i like for them to let me try new things so i think i want you to the next step is for you to create a list of companies or brands that have at least three of those characteristics not my characteristics but your list of characteristics and I think it's important to list any company or brand who shares your same core values. These could be two separate things that they may, so say Coca-Cola shares my same core values, but they don't communicate well and they don't have any of those traits. Well, at least it gives you a list. You're just growing a long list of who you should really analyze and kind of look in and, and figure out who to 
talk to. And then you need to really define, really all of this is helping you define your dream client. And for me, it's something else. So I'm, I'm sure I will push my idea onto you and you might or might not agree, but you can tell me over there in the chat if you agree with me. So is it a big name brand? Because more than likely, you're going to create one series. They're not going to be like, hey, you know, you created that Coca-Cola. Let's just say, because I'm a Coke girl, that's for sure. So Coca-Cola comes to me and says, hey, we want you to create an ad series or ad campaign for our next whatever. They're not going to come to me every year after year after year. That's just not the way a big brand works. And usually a big brand will work with an ad agency, just kind of as you know, or as you may not know. But that's something um but maybe your goal is to just get that one brand because it does get your name out there and i think that's that's awesome so i mean i don't know anybody who's going to be like you know what i'm not going to work for coca-cola i mean well maybe pepsi people might not like that but like a big i don't know liquid paper who who knows you know somebody a bigger brand that somebody i just have liquid paper on my desk that's why i said that maybe that's not a huge brand to everybody um but just think about that. So like a corporate. So think about corporate work can be good, steady freelance work. Um, yeah, some of these young people probably don't know what white out is or liquid paper, whatever. It's like this white stuff. You can you can draw with it on black paper, just so you know. You should try something like that, Brittany. That'd be cool. Or Kim, if I if it's the Kim, I think it is. Um, another lettering illustrator girl. So all right, so corporate. Corporate work, you could go in. Sometimes they'll hire somebody for a couple of months. Sometimes it'll go for you know, six months at a time while they work on um, one project or they you know, hire them in regularly. Um, corporate work can be good, but it may not be what you're looking for. Um, and it may not be the work you want to do. So, But think about it because some corporate work is going to be internal and there's a lot of flexibility and some's going to be external and it's really tight and they don't really want you to mess up their brand. So think about what that is and look at the traits and look at some of their past projects and things like that. And then maybe it's a design firm, firm or an ad agency. And again, you're working as a steady freelancer or you, when they have a project and they need, you know, your skills, then they hire you in to work at a, for a certain amount of time. And then small to medium companies, you, maybe you're on retainer, you're doing work regularly. To me, an ideal client is somebody who I'm going to be able to have a long-term relationship with and help build their brand. I really enjoy, I mean, I think what we get to do as designers is awesome. Like we get to help other people's dreams come true. Like they wanted to start this business and if they don't know how to brand themselves or they don't know how to get their message out to get, I mean, that is powerful stuff we're able to do and I think that's awesome. All right, we're moving on. So think about what you can offer to each of these. What can you do to help them increase their sales or reach a broader audience or educate their customer base, whatever it is. So maybe what type and size company should I research? Um, a large corporation, I would say, I actually think like even 500 people is a lot, but like a thousand people or 5,000 or more. Clearly, there's a whole gap here between 1,000 and 5,000. And then medium-sized companies, these could be, again, design agencies or ad agencies. Usually design firms are like less than 15, I would think. And then small companies, mom and pop shops, design firms, whatever. Any questions? Give it a minute. All right, so just to kind of know, uh, break this down a little bit. And I've already kind of gone over this, actually. So large corporations, they do hire freelancers as well as hire, hiring talent for specific campaigns. So big, big companies like Coke, they have an in-house department. Sometimes that in-house department even needs freelancers to, to do something. Um, Medium-sized companies could also be corporations, but they're just smaller companies. And they may need, they may not have a designer in house all the time, you know. So that would be maybe somebody, something that you could reach out and, you know, you're part of that team. You become part of their, you are their designer. And they don't think of you any, as your own company, they think of you as part of their company. And definitely small companies do this. Often owners and staff are, are wearing multiple hats and they have various roles. And a lot of times they're new unless they've been entrepreneurs before. 
So if they if this is their first attempt, um, you may need to do a little bit of educating in the business space. They may not come from a business background. Hopefully they've read books and hopefully you're reading books that are business-based and entrepreneurial-based. But again, these people really um, run their their shops or their businesses with a huge amount of passion and they're super hardworking. So no matter what size a company that you're going to go for, every client needs to know how you can help them. So how you can help them is by that expert skill and that that superpower. Um, so And you may have multiple. It's not like you just have one. So be prepared to tell them exactly how you can and what you can do to help them. And help them figure out what they need. And this really is important when you're just in line at the coffee shop and you start start up conversation or you're at church and you start up conversation with somebody or you're, I don't know, at the DMV and you start up a conversation. You want to be able to have your core values in the back of your mind and know what's important to you and how what you try to get across to people of, with how you can help them. And if you ask the right questions, you can get a lot of information about their company and then what you could do for them. And if like they want they're like a plumber and they really need a website and you don't want to do websites, then just be like, hey, I could get you in touch with somebody else. Be that link to so to to show um, somebody. And I personally would not uh, do a finder's fee for that. Just help people, you know, like um, uh, Jason says, yeah, he's corporate. Um, wish we could hire freelancers. He's drowning. So. Um, all right, so ask them what they need. What does what are they trying to get out of whatever you're going to be doing for them? Are they trying to get more leads? Are they trying to grow their customer list? Are they in, trying to increase awareness? Maybe it's an internal thing and they're trying to educate their their employees about something. Maybe they're trying to uh, change a commonly held belief. Maybe they're um, trying to introduce or they need to be introduced to new marketing outlets, especially this is uh, applicable for small companies, not necessarily corporations aren't like, hey man, have you heard of social media? Like probably not a good uh, thing. They've probably heard of that. Of that. So what do, you, what do I mean by research? So I want you to find out who these decision makers are at these companies. You definitely need to know where they're located, like what time zone are they in? And who's currently doing the creative work for them? And you can tell by some that clearly no one's doing their creative work. If you're talking about a small company and they're just doing it in Word, um, sometimes it's just contacting a local magazine or and seeing, hey, you know, this ad is really sucky. Of course, you wouldn't say that to anybody. You would just keep that in your head. And then you would say, I'm going to call and see who submits their ads to them. You know, and usually a like a local thing and they might give you that information or you could just call the company and say, Hey, you know, I was just noticing your ad and, uh, in whatever and say, Hey, you know, I think, um, I was just wondering who was doing your work for them. They don't need to know. They're probably not screening their calls. You don't need to say I'm a designer and I want to do your work. This is sucky, but you might want to just, or maybe it's awesome. You just need to find out, but you need to do a little investigative um, research. I also wanted to be a private investigator like Magnum PI. Definitely dating me, I understand. Who are the decision makers? Oops, I just went up instead of down. So at large, cor at large corporations, look for people with the titles like marketing director, vice president of marketing, creative director, and art directors. Probably designers aren't um, great at getting in contact with they're probably just trying to get their stuff out there too so people who are making the decisions are creative directors art directors but i uh, you know jason like i don't know what your title is so share your title that would be great if you could um and then it again helps us to know because he is the only designer that again this is smaller companies so hopefully he'll tell us that in a minute so at medium-sized companies you want to look for the name of the yes boton I'm going to write it down. Oopsie boogers. Sorry. Photon is the square shaped serif. And a little sideways there. Uh -huh. Oh, I love, I don't know what F FTW means. 
Maybe you can write that in, Lenny, because I'm just really, I'm not all this. Um, anyway, I don't know what that means. I can't even do digital content coordinator. So that would be another one you could look for. And that's, I'd say, small uh, to uh, medium-sized firm, um, company, corporation. So think about creative director, art director, senior designer, marketing director, and digital content coordinator. So anything that's kind of like piques your interest that you think that you could talk, you know, you could be them or they are making, um, you're welcome, Kim. It's a great typeface. The other is Glober. Just if anybody cares, I'm going to type it in. It's a great one. I think I got it for $19 on sale um, from myfont.com or something. Anyway, um, for small companies, again, these people are wearing a lot of hats. So look for owner, manager, or anyone with marketing in their title. So social media. So I'm not probably going to tell you anything you don't know. Um, I still don't know what F is. TW means, oh, for the win, <laughs> Jeremy, I'm such an idiot. Okay, here we go. Thank you. I guess you need to put things in quotes for me. Um, I'm cracking myself up here because I'm, so anyway. Um, okay, great. Thank you, Jason. So um, social media, which platforms is the company active on? And then which platforms are these decision makers active on? So because the company probably is pushing out something, whether even if it's just a little Facebook page, they might not have but like 60 followers, but it's something, you know, and how active are they and when are they live? So I would like start a spreadsheet and get all this information. Okay, it doesn't always mean that. You'll have to tell me what it means. You can send me a text message, Jason. Karn. Okay. There's so many Jasons. All right. So, um, Use a spreadsheet to document the days, the times, and the content that they're posting. So clearly you're not doing a huge list. I, I suggest just picking like 20 companies and going forward, you know, you seeing what they're seeing what they're posting, what they're liking, what they're um, commenting on, what they're sharing. You know, kind of like stalk them, I guess. You're not doing it for a ton of companies. You might just want to start with five, but that might be able to give you an idea because you've already decided what are some common uh, values that you can connect with? And some people are really, they share a lot, maybe a little too much. So anyway, so pretty much this takes you to, um, I'm going to, this is just a little brief part. That's like part of one module and part of like one of the free, three free videos. So there's three free videos that you can access at findingyoursuperpower.com. And I'll give you a link in a minute. Um, and then there's a special link for, um, for the, I'll give you in a minute. Anyway, so I'm going to kind of go through what the course is. So here's some of the, like the outcomes and the deliverables. We, as we talk in professor talk or teacher speak, we want to know what are the outcomes and clients speak in deliverables. Like, what am I going to get? So it's really the superpower guide. So there are 11 modules in the course. It is kind of long, but I know you can do it. Um, after the introduction, module one um, is module one, the introduction, clearly. And then module two takes you through setting goals, both short and long term. And you're actually setting goals regularly um, throughout the course because when you set small goals and you accomplish them, you actually stay more committed. So if you were trying to lose weight and you said, hey, I'm going to lose uh, 10 pounds and it was like the first week you don't lose anything and the second week you don't lose anything or you lose just a pound. It's like, that's too big of a goal. Like the, they usually break it down. Like if you do one of those apps for losing weight, they'll say, okay, you need to lose a half a pound a week to meet your goal. Like that's something you can do a half a pound. Yeah, I could do that a week, but 10, it's like too big. And so again, we're, we're doing some of those same things in this course. And again, these are all, everything that's in this course is something you could I think you could apply it for a client. I mean, to um, use some of these things for clients. Anyway, I'm going to, you could stalk their customers, things like that. You know, whatever. Depends on what you want to do um, or how you want to help them. So module three is broken down into four parts. The first three lessons are surveys and they analyze you and they dig into your personal and professional history. And we're going to also investigate how you work alone and what how you work 
and it's not moving. Okay. The surveys are analyzed by the recharging team, which mainly is me, but there are two other people that work for me. Um, and we supply you with this assessment report and it's individualized specifically for you. So it's not automatic, like you don't finish it and then I'm just sitting up waiting and I never get any sleep or anything. So it, I said it takes seven to 10 days, but I'm really gonna try to go quicker than that. But this report summarizes your strengths both personally and professionally. Again, these are self-identified strengths. Um, it also identifies what I think is maybe your creative superpower. This is gonna be a little clear later when you get another report from the feedback team uh, that you also get from us. We review that as well. So it's gonna illustrate ways both reports do this. It's going to illustrate ways to connect with others, to establish trust with your ideal audience, as well as list out themes that you can use for content that you're going to be creating in Module 9. Uh, module 4 is that feedback loop, and it takes you a 360. No, I don't count my husband as slave labor or salve labor. Um, he probably will not help that much. Um, he'll do other things that are awesome, but probably not reading the reports. So module four takes you to a 360 degree view of yourself um, by having you create a feedback team. You're gonna answer, they're only gonna answer 12 questions. You answer a lot more questions and you're gonna be like, when is this thing gonna end? Um, anyway, so 12 questions that are gonna shed more light on you and your strengths. And this also, uh, this module also builds you a support team. So you have a feedback team and a support team. And then module five takes you into a deeper dive of your beliefs as a company. And it that's where we really get into your core values. And some of the same things that we talked about today are covered in, but it goes into more depth. So it also helps quick, uh, create, you create a quick bio, an elevator pitch, and then it goes into like a, a little bit longer pitch as well for you to be able to talk to people. So module four gives us more information to analyze in our report. In module six, you're gonna be analyzing the second assessment report. So again, you get one from doing your individualized um, report and then you have this feedback team that's also given us some information and then we're gonna give you another report with that. And you're gonna have time to analyze both of these and it's part, like there's a whole module just gone into this. And you actually get like a, I don't know how many pages, uh, let me see how many pages this is, a 49 page document. Um, that I just, you know, put in a three ring binder and it's, you know, it, it's easy to use. So you can use it and go through it and whatever. Anyway, so after that, you're going to read the report, see what kind of hits you. And then module seven, now we're really starting to get everything set up. And you can go through the, that, those first six modules pretty quickly. Module seven, actually, this, you can go through this module pretty quickly. While you're waiting for our feedback or whatever, I think, while you're waiting for the feedback, you can go on to module seven if you haven't gotten it back from module six and you want to just keep going. So module seven finds and helps you set up. And we provide you with templates for emails, for all these things, for the feedback team, your support team. This is just a plug and play. It is easy breezy. So module eight goes um, into, it guides you how to identify and understand your ideal audience. And we really go into a lot more detail. We did, if you've watched video one, it does cover some of the same things that we covered today, but it really, um, the three free videos, the one that really talks about, you know, connecting and um, finding your ideal audience and maybe how to connect with them, which is some of the stuff that we talked about today. Um, it goes, into tons more detail in module eight and I'm not covering the same material. It's um, the free videos are separate entities and they help with this, but they also help you. If that's all you wanted to do too, that's great. The videos hopefully will help you. The three free ones or bonus ones or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, so module eight, we know what that one does. And then, you know, this whole course takes you step by step. Everything is, is marked out the goals are established. You just set a date, you set some deadlines and it's going to tell you how to start that conversation. Like what we've talked about today, you've found the ideal, you've stalked them, now you've researched them. Now, how do I start that conversation? And, and the course goes through that as well as when you should um, put your stuff out there and how you 
can continue to connect with them. So here's four ways, four things you could do. So these are stories. If you just kind of want to get a brief, hey, I know how I want to just create a self-promotion series. Here's four ways of things you could do. So think of a part of design that you enjoy the most and you'd like to do more work in that area. So you kind of have that in the back of your mind and find clients that that are doing that kind of work or maybe find a client that isn't doing that work but could. So maybe they don't have a website but they should have a website. That's a really general idea but you know it could be that they're not doing any illustrations and that could be something that you could offer that you think would reach a different audience and grow their grow their customer base and you know, help increase sales because that's usually what companies are after. Oh, thanks, Amy. Love you. Um, so anyway, so then think of idiosyncrasies. And I did look this up. I did spell check this word because Lord knows I didn't have it right. Um, think of idiosyncrasies that you share with a few people. So maybe it's a pet peeve like, oh, I cannot stand people. <laughs> if my mom's listening, really, these are all hers. I just have adapted, um, you know, who pop their gum. Like, I, oh, that is like, and my students know that it's like uh, clicking pins, you know, I'm like, oh my God, I can't stand it. Like, I can't focus it. It's the ADD in me. But um, maybe that's something, you know, you could do a whole series on crazy things like that. Um, then share where maybe you've struggled. And I think that's kind of those those really personal things that are are can be funny, like Sheldon did in his um, how you know the the British versus the American pronunciation or the words we, they use. You know him sharing about the you know hey teacher do you have a rubber can can be kind of a, a vulnerable actually it's more of a vulnerable kind of thing. But maybe you you've had like a issue. Maybe it was a weight issue and you really you've you've overcome that. I think that that can be something that is really powerful and it's a really good way to connect with, with, with people. So module nine, we're going to get back to it. And module nine uh, guides you step-by-step -step in developing and scheduling, de developing a schedule to create and publish your first self-promotion series. And it, I kind of include exactly where and when it it should be broadcasted and we're going to talk about those different places and um, why you should do it when and it's all based off of your research so that's great. So module 10 teaches you how to test how to optimize release and then repeat and this process with a second series of self-promotion pieces and then module 11 just wraps up your learning. So at the end of the course your main takeaway is that you're communicating stories that are going to reveal your strengths, your talents, your your passions, your history in through a self-promotion series based on the information that we gather and your career goals, what you what you want out of your freelancing. And now again, any questions, I'll open it up. And you can also, if you don't want to type in the chat, you're like, hey, I have a really um, sensitive question or a personal question, you know, um, I want you to be able to, you know, email me at diane at rechargingyou.com is the best best way to, to do that. Um, you can also always diane at, re, at uh, designrecharge.org as well. So, um, and then I think I have a thank you. So if you want any more information, you can go to findingyoursuperpower.com. And I'm going to stop sharing real quick. And I had my glasses on because my eyes get tired. Um, I do have better than 20-20 vision, just so you know. But I do, you know, when you're on the computer so long, you got to be healthy. Um, so I'm going to share a couple links. Yes, there's a cost. So, Kim, I think if you were at Creative South, you get a coupon code. But I'm also going to give a coupon code to um, you guys here. And I just have to remember what it is. And so I'm going to look at it real quick. And it's for $100 off. This um, course is $397. Um, it is really um, specific for designers and for freelancers. And the one for today, it's also $100 off. Um, this is only going to be good um, till July 10th. Um, and it is, let's see, let me see if I can copy this booger. 
I really should just leave my glasses on because I'm still looking at the computer. So I'm just going to do that. Copied it. And now I've got to go back to Chrome. And I'm just, whatever. I just, oh, thanks. Oh, that's great to hear. see you here. Um, does this small like you look funny? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, so Jeremy's doing the course. So here is the coupon code and you get a hundred dollars off with this one. You can't combine any coupon. If you had one from creative South and you have one from this and you, um, I don't have it so that I hate, I mean, I don't mind. I think my glasses are kind of cool. They're like $15 from Walmart cause I'm cheap, but, um, they're pretty good for cheapos, but, um, kind of hurts my eyes to look at like, unless I'm reading anyway, side note and it's time to go. So, um, that's the coupon code. It'll be good through for a month and that's the, the cost. So three ninety seven. So if you're on the, um, thing today, you can use that same coupon code until 10th and you'll be able to get a hundred dollars off. And so it'll be two ninety seven for you. So Jeremy, um, he says, it's been great. He took a ton of notes on just the, um, free videos. But if you just want the three free videos, it's awesome. That's awesome. So the first one really talks about connecting with who, who is your ideal client. It goes a little bit more into detail about kind of what we talked about today. Um, and it also talks about answering some questions about you and some more. I mean, it's very, I think there's seven questions and we go into a lot more detail in the surveys. And then the next one free video, which will come out hopefully tomorrow will be 10 tips for calling on a new client. So things to do and not to do maybe. And then the last one are some rookie mistakes and that'll be next week, next uh, Tuesday. Those should be out. Um, those are the, those are the bonus videos. Um, but if, again, if I can answer any questions about it or, ho you know, hopefully you got something out of today and um, let me share one more link since I didn't share that one. So this one gives you one more video kind of why I created this. Oh, Jeremy says he has 10 pages in those. That's awesome, Jeremy. He must write really big. Um, let's see if there's any other questions. Better than 2020 is called, no, no, no. Like I have, what normal people can see at 20 feet, I can see at 40 feet. I, you should ask my students. They're like, I'm like, those two fonts are different. They're like, no, they're the same. I made them the same. I'm like, they're different. So I can see things from far away. And I, hey, I'm just tooting my own horn a little bit today. Sorry about that. Um, I sure do appreciate you guys all being here. I know it's three minutes over and I'm really, I can just keep chatting away all to myself. So I want to make sure I don't do that. But again, if you just want to get the three free videos, um, there is a link just for you. Um, it, let's see. And this lets you get, lets you see video one. You might've gotten it in an email. Oh, thank you. Oh, he has tiny notebooks. That's what it is. Oh, um, thanks, Jeremy. It made me laugh. Thank you, Kim. I really appreciate it. And if there's anything I can do to help you or you want me to do a, another series on something definitely am open to learning what you guys want and so just let me know and then i'm going to share ways to get in touch with me so you can always follow me on twitter or instagram really just twitter at both of these but you can also follow me on instagram um at design recharge oops and oh, we have that posted. Did it post? Yay. Oh, and next week is Lenny Terenzi. And I'm super excited. Talk about making lemon out of lemonade. Yeah. No, making lemonade out of lemons. I don't know. I'm confused. I've been talking to myself this whole time. I mean, I've been talking to y'all, but you know, it looks kind of like I'm talking to myself. So anyway, I'm ex super excited. If you haven't seen his work, amazing designer, amazing illustrator, really fun, clever, um, inventive, like he does crazy characters that are, he makes up. Plus he's just a really good guy and he really has found a community and he really uses AIGA really well. And like, he's just found his place and he 
took something, he's continued to do this, isn't just one time, but he's done this throughout his life. Um, take something that maybe somebody would think of as bad and just make it awesome. And it a lot of it is about connections and people he's met and getting out of the back of the room and coming up and stop being a, he stopped being a wallflower. So um, thank you, Pamela. I really appreciate it. So I can't wait to be regular. I'll be interviewing someone. It won't be me big the whole time. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. And if, again, if you have, you want to email me at Diane at recharging you.com and that's great. Or Diane at designrecharge.org is great. So let me know what you think. If you think you should never do this again or whatever, that's awesome. And if you haven't checked out the new site, you should definitely go. Let me pop, pop that sucker up there. You should go check it out at rechargingyou.com. And hopefully that'll, um, oh yeah, and the lunchbox, you should check out his, if you do a search, like Jeremy's talking about lunchbox love, he makes these awesome illustrations on paper. I thought it was napkins, but it's on paper for his daughter. So we're, we are, we're going to have a blast. He's awesome. Can't wait for you guys to meet him if you don't know him. So thank you guys all for coming. Thanks, Mom. I hope Dad got to watch a little bit and went and falling asleep on the couch. But um, anyway, it's always good to laugh at yourself. So have a great week, and I'll see you next one. And thanks for staying six minutes late. And sorry I had technical difficulties with myself earlier. So thank you. Bye.